Hey guys, welcome back to Jody Hughes Music. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about our G major scale. And as you just saw, we're going to have you going from one end of the neck all the way up here. It's not like your typical positional approach, as you've probably seen many times before. And I'm going to preface this by saying your left hand fingering is super important. So pay very close attention. I'm going to take it one hand at a time. I'll get to your right hand in just a moment. But for now, let's start here with our left hand. So middle finger is going to go on the fifth fret of the fourth string. And then our pinky is going to go on the seventh fret of the fourth string. So, so far we have G and then this is an A. All right. Next, we're going to go to the third string, fourth fret. That is a B note. So, so far, G, A, B. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come to the fifth fret with our middle finger. And that's going to be C. So, so far our notes are G, A, B, C. G, A, B, C. And I'll get into the right hand for just a second here. So you can start by doing your typical single string patterns. Thumb, index, thumb, index. So I might go thumb, index, thumb, index. So just thumb index, thumb index. Now, normally if I was going to stay here, I'd probably drop this finger in to the seventh fret of the third string. But since I want to get up here, this is where my shift occurs. All right. So watch closely again. Notice anything? My pointer finger jumped. So once I get done here at the fifth fret of the third string, my pointer finger is here. He's just going to shift all the way up to the seventh fret of the third string. Okay, so watch again. There's the shift. Now, this lines me up. That's G, A, B, C, D. This lines me up for the E at the ninth fret of the third string. And I'm just going thumb index down here. Fingers, thumb index, thumb index. Shift, ninth fret of the third string, and then watch closely here. Seventh fret of the second string. Right? And that's an F sharp. That's our F sharp. And then finally, we're at our G note at the eighth fret, okay, of the second string. I'll do this slow. Five, seven, four, five, seven, nine, seven, eight. So this is what's called a one octave scale so far. Now, here again, I'm going to have another shift. My middle finger at the eighth fret of the second string is simply going to slide up to the tenth fret of the second string. So, so you'll see that my middle finger plays two notes in a row. It's like that. Now, ninth fret of the first string, and then tenth fret of the first string. This is, here's our G, G, A, B, C. All right, you with me so far, I hope. G, A, B, C. I'll count the frets. Eighth fret, tenth fret, ninth fret, tenth fret. Now, it's up to you what you do here. Some people just keep this thumb index going, but what I do, I end up on my middle finger there, and I'm starting to alternate these fingers now and not my thumb. It doesn't make any sense for me to bring my thumb all the way down if I can keep these fingers down there. So I'm middle pointer on the tenth fret. And then where are we going? To 12th fret of the first string with our pinky. And these fingers are once again just alternating, just alternating them. So these notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, here's the shift, A, B, C, D. And guess what? We got to make one more shift. Our pointer finger, once again, he's going to leap all the way up to the 14th fret of the first string. That is an E note. And then I'm going to move up to the 16th fret with my middle finger. And then I'm going to move up to the 17th fret with my ring finger. Wow, we are way up there now. These notes are E, F sharp, and G. So this is your G major scale. I'll do it again slow. And there's a variety of right hand uh, patterns you can use. There's no wrong answer here. It works, uh, whatever works best for you. I simply, as I move up to here, you'll see that I bring in my thumb sometimes 
like there. You can keep these fingers alternating and just move them like this. That's fine. That works great. But the challenge with this shifting exercise is getting it from here smoothly. And that's another thing I was going to tell you is practice this in pieces too. You don't have to practice the whole scale. You might just go and then from here, maybe just from here. You know, moving it around in pieces sometimes helps you find the uh, problems, er, problem areas and zero in on them, zoom in on them, so to speak. So the shift is there, and the shift is there, and then the shift is there. Now, there are a number of places you could shift uh, other than that, like another one. Sometimes I shift there. You know, don't want to go over all of them, but I'm just going to let you know real fast that you know, there's almost infinite amounts of places to shift and use your fingers. But I like this one I just showed you a lot uh, as far as like the speed goes. And then of course you want to practice it going back down. But a couple things about scales I would just say is don't do this like get really bad sounds from clicking the notes. You want to make sure every note's clear. If you play like a saxophone or a trumpet, they, they uh, play what are called long tones. So I recommend just playing really slow. Holding each note for the full duration. The more you practice this, the clearer your sound's gonna be, and you want clarity. Especially as you play faster, it comes across even more so if your notes are kind of like what I call dud notes, right? So that's our G major scale. Once again, the notes are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then it repeats G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And if you want to keep going, if you're really glutton for punishment here, it keeps going. There's G, you could go A, B. So what I'm doing there, there's your G. I could go to, what is that, the 19th? And then you have 21. And that takes you all the way up to the B. And then you're still in the key of G. One thing I'll talk about later on is you don't always have to practice your scale starting from the root or the one note. You could start from, say, the third and go to the third. You could start from anywhere, you know, you go to the, start on the fifth and go up. A mistake that a lot of people make sometimes is that they'll start on the root and go to the root. But really you want to be able to start a scale anywhere, you know, you could start pieces of the scale. You know, uh, maybe a D up to an F sharp, I don't know. But starting it and ending on different notes is a great practice so you get the flexibility. Just, you know, really just fret through it. And play all sorts of different patterns. And that's the only way to master it is to really just kind of explore. Um, and I'll talk about this more in uh, other videos, but another practice that I use is I just practice moving up and down. different um, patterns, okay? But I'll go over this more in the, another video. For today, we're just gonna talk about the G major scale, and if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Um, I'll be more than happy. Hit that subscribe button, because that's gonna keep me putting out more and more material. Also, go to my website, jodyhughesmusic.com. Sign up for my email list. I'm gonna notify you whenever I have a new blog update and a new YouTube. Uh, sometimes I'm gonna have documents that are going to be used with the videos. I may have a tab for this or some sort of other document about the scale. So be sure to visit the link in the description, but you guys take care and let me know if you have any questions.